Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all, to those of you who are here with us in the building and those of you joining us online. We are assured that the sound is working for those online this week and apologies for the technical problems we had last week. And so as we begin this journey of Advent, as we still our hearts and minds, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we come to this first Sunday of Advent and we come to lighting our candles, I wonder, Andrew, would you like to come and light the candle for us this week? And then perhaps Zoe can do it next week. Come and give me a hand. So we have a few words to say first of all. So Jesus said, keep awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. I'm going to light this first one. Andrew can probably reach easier than I can anyway. That's you. Do you want to blow that out? Thank you very much. Jesus is the light of the world, a light no darkness can ever put out. So together we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. So in a moment of quiet, in the knowledge of that love, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by God's Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord, and come, that with you as our protector we may be rescued from our sins, and with you as our deliverer we may be set free, for you live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading, a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know what time it is how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, one day is near. Let us lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus spoke to his disciples. About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. <clears throat> For as on the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Give thanks to the Lord for this, his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So today is a really special day, and it's considered a time of transition. Yes, a very special day, because today in the commercial world is the day we move between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It's transition time. Ah, oh yes. But more seriously, in the church calendar, the first Sunday of Advent is when we transition into a new liturgical year. We move from cycle C to cycle A. Now, I'd be interested to know, on this first Sunday of Advent, what symbols come to mind when you think of Advent. Pink and purple candles, calendars with pop-out chocolates tucked inside, singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, because these are all indeed associated with Advent. However, for those who merely think of Advent as an uninterrupted transition to Christmas, today's Gospel lesson from Matthew is probably not what they expected or wanted to hear, with its images of people being taken, of thieves in the night. It can all be quite scary. And it certainly doesn't evoke the warm sentiments of the season with its apocalyptic images. But every year on the first Sunday in Advent, we read from the apocalyptic teachings of Jesus Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have versions of these, and they are all attributed to the last days of Jesus' ministry, his arrival in Jerusalem before the Last Supper. Now, a few years ago, I was interested to read that the High Street bookstore Watersons displayed a sign that read, Books on the Apocalypse have now been moved to the current events section. Because, you know, all through history, there have been eras when people were convinced they were living through the so-called end times. Now, apparently, psychologists and other people, who knows why, have done surveys 
And in people's minds, when they hear the word apocalypse, what comes straight to mind are crazed looking men wandering around like John the Baptist carrying signs saying in big letters saying end of the days, end times are here, take care, etc. But you know, the irony for us here this morning is that as Christian people we should know that Apocalypse is actually the Greek title of the last book of the New Testament. And the reason that we call the book Revelation in English is because that's what Apocalypse means. It is an unveiling of something, the revealing of something. And what's more, it is the revelation of something good. The full inbreaking of God's kingdom when Christ, Christ the King of Kings, returns. So those in Christ, we can live in hope because we know what the future holds. We know who is coming. Jesus will come in judgment. But he comes to judge justly. And he will come to conquer but he comes as the lamb who was slain. And he continues to bear the wounds of his love for us. Jesus who is coming is the one who has already come. He is the one who was and who is and who is to come. The eternal God who is perfect love. And it is because that Jesus Christ is coming, we can live in hope. We can live in the now and the not yet. God has already come to us in Jesus and we have already been redeemed. So the end of time is not a terrible destruction of the world. It's actually a time of restoration. It's a time of healing. And it's a time of perfection. Because at the end of time, God, who is the actual source of all joy, all peace, all light, all love, will permeate every fibre of creation. And we hear that echoed in Isaiah. The plowshares, all gone. We will live in peace. Now, Matthew's Gospel text does remind us, though, that no one knows when the day or hour will come for Christ's return, not the hosts of heaven, nor Jesus himself. Only God knows when and exactly how that return will unfold. So that leaves us to think, it could be today. Think about it. It could be today. Or it could be in another thousand, two thousand years. But don't forget, it could be today. Are we ready? Whatever happens in human history, one event is completely unpredictable. The coming of Jesus in glory at the end of time. Nevertheless, Jesus calls his followers to stay alert, reminding them that of the events that unfolded in the time of Noah, where people were going about, they were getting married, they were eating, they were drinking, going about business as usual. They probably didn't begin to panic until the water kept rising and rising and rising, and then perhaps the penny would have dropped. But until we probably have got to carry on in our lives. But then, just like in the days of Noah, we will not know. So Jesus gives the start watch this warning. Keep watch. Stay alert. Because he could come unexpectedly. He doesn't want us to be unaware 
He wants us to be looking for him, to be doing things. We're called to be alert people, which means we need to live our lives in the light of the expectation of Christ's coming. And I think it does affect us. If you think it could be today, it could be tomorrow morning, it has to affect how we all behave. The question isn't just going to be about what are we doing at the moment of Jesus' return. No, it's about what are we doing with our lives now and every day. What are we dedicating our lives to? And keeping watch doesn't mean we've all got to go and stand up there and be peering into the skies all the time or scanning through Revelation trying to find things to suggest it could be. It means living our life for our Lord Jesus in faithfulness and love every single day. It means nurturing, loving and helping our neighbour in need. It means sharing the gospel, using our skills and talents not for ourselves and for our own fulfilment, but for God and for his kingdom. His kingdom which is here and coming. We live in a world that is melting around us. A world that is disintegrating under the weight of supporting a people who have not paid attention to its natural resources. We have selfishly ploughed ahead and developed political, economic and military systems, pay no regard for our natural world. We live in a world where violence against people based on prejudice is rife. A world where children are the most regular victims of warfare, homelessness, poverty and sexual abuse. The hopefulness in waiting is in knowing that redemption and justice will arrive. And it's in our waiting with righteousness, alertness and patience that we participate in its arrival. So my prayer this morning is that we will use this time of Advent to commit to prayer, spiritual exercise and reflection so that we may be spiritually ready to celebrate the birth of Christ and his second coming. And let us also remember that the darkness of Advent always ends in the light of Christmas. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray for the church and the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. We pray together to God the Father, who created all things, seen and unseen, <clears throat> to the Son, who struggled and suffered in this world, and to the Holy Spirit, whose wisdom and freedom gives us wings. We pray that we find in the nearer presence of God both strength and humility. May we learn to live from an inner center that does not seek its own. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the peace that is beyond understanding to visit our hearts and those of whom, all of whom we love. For God's deep peace to lie at the heart of our dealings with each other. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our may the strength of Jesus' acceptance of sacrifice be active in all our work. We pray for those who govern us and ordain how our lives are regulated. For men are willing of power, politicians, judges, industrialists, teachers, doctors, all who make decisions that affect the lives of others. May God's justice, truth, and selflessness enter and possess their understanding. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are in pain of body or mind, for the sick, for Stuart Moss, Sarah McDougall, Fida Logan, Sandra Peterkin, Dennis Sanderson, Mary Jamieson, George McWilson, 
Louisa Cross, Catherine Wilcock, Cliff Piper, Frank Saband, Katrina O'Neill, Ken Cox, and for the recently departed, Neil Richardson. We pray for those who govern us and ordain how our lives are regulated. For men and women of power, politicians, judges, industrialists, teachers, doctors, all who make decisions that affect the lives of others. May God's justice, truth, and selflessness enter and possess their understanding. We pray for all who are in pain of body or mind, for the sick, for Stuart Moss, Sarah McDougall, Theda Logan, Sandra Peterkin, Dennis Sanderson, Mary Jameson, George McWilliam, Louisa Cross, Catherine Wilcock, Cliff Piper, Frank Saband, Katrina O'Neill, and Ken Cox, and for the recently departed, Neil Richardson. May God's <clears throat> justice, truth, and selflessness enter and possess their understanding. We pray for all who are in pain of body or mind and for the dying, for the mentally ill shut out of normality, for the lonely, for those racked by guilt or shame or irrational fears, and we pray for all those who care for such suffering people. Jesus, grant me this, I pray, ever in thy heart to stay. We pray for each other, those around us now, people whom we know more or less well, but all of whom hold things hidden from us, uncertainties, loneliness, and joys. Lord, in your mercy, Hear yeah. our may the Holy Spirit move among us, awakening our minds and sharpening our perceptions so that we may become more nearly members together in Christ. We ask these things in his name. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Peace be with you.
Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, God, our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds to be, and still you draw the universe to its fulfillment. Dawn and evening celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. In Christ your Son the life of heaven and earth were joined, sealing the promise of your new creation, given yet still to come. Taught by your Spirit, we who bear your threefold likeness look for the city of peace in whose light we are transfigured and the earth transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who await the coming of your Son, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Some people prefer to sit at this point. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. In Jesus, you showed us yourself. Our hope is built on him, the first, the last, the living one, obedient even to accepting death. He opened the gate of glory and calls us now to share the life of heaven. Before he was given up to suffering and death, a light with the vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, 
his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom, made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So draw near to receive the body and blood of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer, the bread of life, the cup of grace, and the table which is warmly welcome and open to all, which brings salvation. You're all very warmly welcome to receive communion. We receive it along the front here if you fill up from um, your right to left and then we'll work our way along and then peel back off.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful, that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. You'll find there were notice sheets available as you came in today. If you didn't pick up one up and you'd like one, then do on your way out. It gives details of everything that is on this coming week. This evening is Choral Evensong, which this evening as our choir head out on tour for the first time in quite a while. Well, it's the other side of Inverness, so they're on tour. Uh, it is at St. Michael and All Angels this evening at half past five for Advent. And then on Wednesday evening is our Paternal Festival, the day in which we as a cathedral church give thanks and remember the witness that St. Andrew had to Christ's name in his time and to whom this cathedral is dedicated. That's on Wednesday at seven o'clock. It will also be followed by refreshments and if you're able to help out with those refreshments you'll find there is a sign-up sheet over on the side as well. All contributions welcome and we look forward to seeing a full cathedral on Wednesday evening. You'll also find details of all of our Christmas and Advent services on a separate flyer as you, as, which is available today as well, as well as being online. Of course, there's refreshments after our worship today, which you're welcome to join with us as well. If you're able, would you please stand as we come to the blessing. The Lord be with you. And also Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you love for this day, for this Advent, and for always. Amen.
also let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.